Which wide receivers can we take to the moon? We're going to find out. Wide receiver threes to wide receiver ones. Oh, yes, my friends. The Fantasy Fest rolls on, but not with Joe, not with Worm. It's Welsh. I am here for you guys and join by The Undertaker and my Extra Point co-host. It is Andrew Erickson and one of the most multi versatile rankers in the industry. Scott Pianowski from Fantasy, uh, Yahoo Fantasy Sports. Baseball, football, he does it all. Gentlemen, I would both let you talk and grandiose say wonderful things about me, but if I waste any time, the chat will yell at me. So we're not going to do that. We're going to get right to the content. And Mr. Scott Pianowski, we're going to start with you. We need to take wide receivers to the moon. You, my friend, are going to take us with your first wide receiver three or further beyond that can get us there. We're looking at, it's a theme, a Packers wide receiver, Mr. Pianowski. So talk to us about Jaden Reed. Yeah, right, right in time with the Jaden Reed fade that was about like yeah. seven minutes ago or whatever it is. I get it. There's a lot of talent here. There's there's a talented running back. There's a bunch of talented receivers. There's even tight ends we want to draft. But I I trust Matt Lafleur. I think Matt Lafleur is the best coach slash coordinator slash play caller in the NFL who isn't treated as royalty. I, mean, I remember some people. I think Bill Simmons was saying in October, "Is, is Matt Lafleur going to get fired?" And I wanted to like drive off the road, and start screaming. Like, no, of course, not. Matt Lafleur is not going to get fired. And the previous segment, they were talking about uh, D Brown and, and Rayvon. I forget who was saying the point, but about touchdowns are fickle, and I get it. But touchdowns are also a function of design. And Jaden Reed, he won't have. If you're going to be a snap count guy, he's, he's maybe going to scare you away. But when he's on the field, he gets snaps and he gets manufactured snaps and he gets plays that are designed to be Jaden Reed touchdowns. Not like he was the guy we landed on, but this play is designed for Jaden Reed to beat a good matchup. So when there's blood in the streets, when there's a nebulous situation that provides the biggest room for profit, Jaden Reed is currently the wide receiver 37 in Yahoo drafts. So, uh, you know, could, could he be a flop? Could he be the wrong answer here? I, I get it. But I also think there's a plausible path for him to be a top 12 fantasy receiver. And as everybody can see, he's got an ADP wide receiver 36. His ECR is 37. A couple things I'm just going to throw out to you. Obviously, you guys all know there's a lot of weapons. There's a lot of mouths to feed. But there also were just some like, you know, some inconsistencies. Five or more targets he received 12 times last year. Six of those games Jaden Reed failed to go over 50 yards and you have all the mouths that are going to be fed more. Now in the positive side, his final four games played, uh, he had 30 targets and went over 50 yards three times while also scoring three touchdowns. So the back half of the year got a little bit more consistent. We know there's so many here. Andrew Erickson, Jaden Reed, Green Bay Packers theme. If there wasn't, if the theme wasn't uh, the Washington Commanders players being values into this fantasy fest. It's Green Bay wide receivers are the talk of the town. Where are you at on Jaden Reed? And does he actually have wide receiver one upside? One of my number one rules I'm going to release in my perfect fantasy football draft strategy guide later this week is leave your draft with the Packers wide receiver because I want to buy into this offense. We are throwing ourselves to draft as many Texans wide receivers as possible, whatever the price. We don't care. It doesn't matter because the Texans are this great offense ascending. Aren't the Packers all those things too? Jordan Love did it in his first year as a starter. He threw more touchdowns than than C.J. Stroud did. Second to only Dak Prescott. Why can't Jordan Love continue to be good? We love all these pieces here. So yes, I get Reed is kind of a victim of circumstance because he's the number one on the Packers and you can get so much of these other guys later. Uh, you can draft as many as you want. Why, why, why are we against... He's wide receiver 36 and 37. He's going behind every single Texas receiver. Why is Tank Dell so much better than Jaden Reed? And again, you have to pay the price because of the Texans and the sexy new toy. But Jaden Reed, I think, is fine at his ADP. Again, it's not the best price because value based on the other Packers receivers. But what if him and Watson had flopped? Would that make Jaden Reed that much better of a pick? I, I think that the value is fine here. And even though he is the most expensive Packers receiver, I, I just want Packers wide receivers on my fantasy team. Yeah. So answer, answer me yeah, this. Okay, answer me this. Jordan Reed. I, I'm sorry. Uh, J, uh, Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. Jordan Love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Out of Jays. Two, two, yeah. It's like, it's like 90210 over here. It's like the, the Anaheim Angels lineup, which like everybody has. Uh, you know, Brandon Walsh, Brendan Walsh, are all the same guy. Okay. So Jordan Love breaks out second half and now is, is kind of a fantasy darling. Actually, one of my favorite quarterback. Targets around quarterback nine, quarterback 10. It's deep. You can do well at any quarterback price point. But he breaks out in the second half. 
Jaden Reed scores seven touchdowns in the final eight games. And I get we're smart. We understand, you know, no, Love's not going to keep this touchdown rate. And, you know, Reed, we want to penalize him because he scored touchdowns. Why, why can't he be seven touchdowns in eight games? Why can't he do the rest of like, I don't know, five touchdowns in eight games? You'll score 10 in a full season. Why should we say, oh, this is a play that worked, a player that worked, a person who was scoring touchdowns on the regular. Let's just hold that against them. And the ADP is so cheap. And I'm going to cheat here. This is total cheating. I know we're looking for wide receiver threes, wide receiver one upside. But if you take Jaden Reed, and all he is is just a startable wide receiver two for you or a high end three, you're going to make a profit. The market is confused here. It shouldn't be. You're going to get your ADP price or a little bit of profit on Jaden Reed with the possibility of him blowing up. That's good enough for me. I think the most interesting thing about this too, Eric, and, and what Erickson said was that Jaden Reed is cheaper than every single one of the Texans wide receivers, which is mind blowing. Jaden Reed's also really fascinating as a 49er fan. He kind of can play a Debo ish mm -hmm. role for Love this that. team and where they'll, you know, they'll do some end around stuff. He can be a big playmaker. I think you would feel more comfortable if there weren't four potential number one wide receivers. And the only pushback I might have is what I mentioned at the very beginning or right after Scott talked that, you know, he has these huge, big, massive upside weeks, but then he has some down weeks. The the in, the thing I will say about Jaden Reed, he might be the one constant, even though you could look at Romeo Dobbs being that, he might be the constant to get the targets where you have these varying big games that are moving around other players. Now, Andrew Erickson, you have a wide receiver three that can get to wide receiver one, and this guy has the opposite issue. There's nobody else. There's no other wide receivers to deal with. George Pickens, wide receiver one for George Pickens. I know you would love to have said Brandon Ayuk if he was traded, but he wasn't. So let's talk about George Pickens, wide receiver 30, uh, 29 on the ECR and 27 as far as ADP goes. Well, let me just check X first, make sure that Brandon Ayuk has not been traded yet to the Steelers. Refreshed. Okay, we're good. George Pickens still can be a wide receiver mm -hmm. one like that. So for me, Pickens is one of these breakout wide receivers entering year three that we're seeing so many of these guys be drafted in round two, round three at that turn. And why can't pick it? What, what does he have not in his profile besides the fact that it's a run heavy offense that is holding him back? We saw him flash wide receiver one potential twice last year during the beginning of the season during the first five weeks when Deontay Johnson was sidelined with the injury. He was averaging nearly 80 receiving yards per game. And then we saw at the back half of the season when they benched Kenny Pickett and they went with Mason Rudolph again, 24% target share, 45% area share, nearly 15 fantasy points per game. That's back end fantasy wide receiver one numbers nearly 100 receiving yards per game. He's shown that when he has competent quarterback play, he can be a wide receiver one when he's getting the volume. So what happened in the offseason? They got rid of his main target competition, and they threw everything they could to upgrade the quarterback position. So to me, he just looks like a such a smash pick where he goes because, yes, is there risk? Of course. Arthur Smith is the offensive coordinator. We've done this song and dance before. It was awful in Atlanta. But he was the head coach there. Now he's just the offensive coordinator. So with Mike Tomlin kind of still calling shots, for personnel, I think that it's going to work better in Smith's favor. But besides that, that's baked into his ADP. He's wide receiver 30. So it's you have that risk, but you have all that upside with Pickens in that round five range that I think his upside is similar to a lot of guys that go in round two. So that's why I like George Pickens so much as a wide receiver three with wide receiver one potential because we're drafting a lot of wide guys with wide receiver one potential as basically wide receiver ones. Yeah. And, you know, an interesting thing, too, of wide receivers with 100 or more targets, you had uh, Brandon Ayuk and Nico Collins that average more yards per target. Number three was George Pickens. And that's a pretty good company to be in. But he also suffers a tiny bit from that Jaden Reed thing I was talking about. Pickens had four finishes inside the top 12 of wide receivers in half PPR while having 10 finishes outside the top 40. Now, obviously, there's no Deontay Johnson in that, by the way, only one finish as a wide receiver two, three in that period of time. So it was kind of like, you know, black or white. It was there was no real gray area. Uh, Mr. Pianowski, what do you think? Do you think George Pickens has the upside to get that classic top in uh, Steeler target wide receiver and be a number one? I'm torn here. Uh, Andrew made a lot of good points. And George Pickens, you take him. It's a bet on talent. It's a bet on career arc. It's a bet on more targets with Johnson gone, but I still have PTSD from Arthur Smith. And I think the Steelers are set up to play really good defense, to run the ball, to win. Think of every Steelers Ravens game where it's like at the same 17, 13, 19, 16 rock fight. It always is. I think the Steelers are going to try to play 17 of those games. 
And although it's nice that Pickett's gone, for one thing, nobody wanted to say Pickens and Pickett over and over again. They wanted to upgrade the quarterback room. What they got is whatever's less left of Russell Wilson and whatever's emerging from Justin Fields, who I think will be a great fantasy player at some point this year, but it won't be necessarily fr from his arm but because he's a great runner with the Konami code and all that. So I, I like the bet on talent. I like the bet on career arc. I don't trust the coordinator. And he, all those percentages and target shares and something, it's going to be – He's going to have the biggest piece of a very small. It's like one of those gas station little pies that you're getting. We're not getting the Thanksgiving pie with the Steelers. We're getting the gas station pie. So I view him a lot of times I talk about green light, yellow light, and red light players. I would love to be green light on George Pickens. He's just a yellow light for me. Still willing to pick him. I'm afraid when he goes to one of my rivals, but there's obviously a lot of things that make me a little bit nervous too. I, I think the offense in general, the quarterback play, who's going to be quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, the new you know scheming, Arthur Smith, what is that going to look like? Is he just going to be, I mean, there, there's a decent likelihood he might just be the same receiver. 71 uh, catches, a, a thousand yards, just because they're not really throwing the ball. Uh, Mr. Scott Pianowski, we are going to go to your second wide receiver three with wide receiver one upside, and we're going to Tennessee, and I got a stat for you after, but talk to us about Calvin Ridley and why he can be a wide receiver one that we've known in the past. Everyone's mad this year. It was mentioned earlier in the Fantasy Fest. Everybody is making him pay because he's got an ECR of 36 and an ADP of 32, but right now he is the number one for Tennessee. How and why is he going to be a wide receiver one? Yeah, he could be. I, I think his year in Jacksonville was better than we we thought it was. Just there was a big gap in the middle, and it wasn't the best of Trevor Lawrence season. So I think he's a good guy to buy on the way back up. And again, very talented quarterback. Pull, he can do well at any price point. With Hopkins being the older receiver here, he's hurt. The Callahans are coming in to save the day. It's a bad defense. I don't think Will Levis, it's too early to say what he is, but I think he's just going to go downfield and let it rip and, and maybe kind of be the, the good and the bad that we saw of Jameis Winston a few years ago where it was fun for fantasy. It wasn't always fun if you were a fan of the Buccaneers. I think this has a carnival potential. And with Hopkins being older, Hopkins being hurt, I think really makes a lot of sense. I also want to say this: we, we both submitted three receivers beforehand. The one guy I cut was Cortland Sutton. And I like Cortland Sutton more and more every week as it goes by. I know, that, again, touchdown rate was un, you know unsustainably high but he's probably the only show in town sean payton finally has his quarterback i want you to draft Cortland sutton maybe he can't be a wide receiver one i think he'll be a wide receiver two back to ridley he was a first round pick I, he, last year wasn't that bad it just the way this season unfolded everybody just kind of turned on him in the middle of the season said okay calvin ridley doesn't want to play football anymore and then he actually had a pretty good final third of the year i'm seeing 140 145 targets here in a team that's probably after years of tennessee being the same team that just ran the ball into the ground they don't have that personnel i'm not really sure i want either one of their running backs i think will levis might be like the sam howell this year where he's just throwing the ball 45 times a week Erickson, one thing I want to present to you with Calvin Ridley, 27 wide receivers last year had a thousand yards receiving. Calvin Ridley had the second worst catch percentage of all 27 of those wide receivers at 57.6%. Do you know who number one was with the worst? Is it, is it Puka Nakua? It is DeAndre Hopkins, his oh, new DeAndre teammate, Hopkins. with the worst 56.4% catch percentage. So two of the worst catch percentage players together. Maybe it's the quarterback. Maybe it's the play. That's the worry. But Calvin Ridley, we've seen the big, big play, especially when they're going to go want to go deep. And the question, even when Hopkins is back, is Calvin going to be maybe solely that deep guy that this offense would run through, which really would let him play this. But what say you, Calvin Ridley, do you think there's wide receiver upside, Erickson? I do. You know, I talked about Calvin Ridley as one of my favorite bounce back wide receivers earlier in the fantasy fest. So I am echoing everything Scott is talking about when it comes to Calvin Ridley. The reason he is viewed as a bust from last year is because we got way out of control drafting a guy who hadn't played football in like two years. And this is what happens. This is the post hype type of sleeper play. Again, it sounds weird to call Calvin Ridley a post hype sleeper, but that's exactly what he is. Everybody was throwing themselves to draft Calvin Ridley when the guy hadn't played football in such a long time. And I mean, when you look up his final stat line, wasn't even really that bad, but he ran horribly when it came to the drops, especially it seemed like all of his drops were in the end zone. So I think Calvin Ridley in this offense that we're going to see throw the ball way more than any other Titans fans buckle up. Like the aerial attack is coming to Nashville. So please enjoy. All right. Well, uh, I want to remind everybody that we might answer some questions at the end. So if you got any questions for these two guys, make sure you do it. But first, we want to tell you about the Fantasy Pros Championship at FFPC. 
Oh, yes, my friends, it is time and your opportunity to win one million dollars the first place prize it's the world's largest online season long tournament fantasy pros championship drafts fast and slow drafts are live right now and guess what you could even go up against some of your fantasy pros people like erickson and myself as a matter of fact i think it's august 28th we've got back-to-back -back drafts you could be playing against us and tons more 350 dollars entry fees no joke but it's a one million dollar prize but you go to fantasypros.com slash FFPC and use promo code fantasypros. When you sign up, you get $25 off of your first entry. You can use that to go up against Erickson or myself. Do it today. The Fantasy Pros Online Championship over at FFPC. Promo code fantasypros. Do it today, my friends. All right, let's get in to some more of these bad boys. Let's talk about some more top-end wide receivers. And Erickson, we're going to go back to you, and we're going to go with a wide receiver that has had just some controversy. And I don't, and I believe if that controversy wasn't there, we would be talking probably easily about like wide receiver two all season long. But I think people are worried about some of that suspension in general. And we're talking about Rasheed Rice. He has got an ECR of 32 and an ADP of 35. But that baby is rising as people are just kind of coming to terms with, hey, you know what? We might not have anything come down. But what say you, Erickson? Obviously, I think the the talent is there, but you have to factor in in some capacity if there is a suspension in play. Are you not? No, I'm not. I have Rice as my wide receiver 22. So I am I'm drafting him as a wide receiver two that I think could be a wide receiver one. Because again, with Rice, the reason his ADP is so low is because a lot of these rankings, especially on some of these home sites where you're drafting Yahoo, ESPN, CBS, a lot of those haven't really been updated or reflected that his court date is December 9th. That is way long into the season. And what the chiefs can do is, Oh, we're just going to appeal it. And then it'll be pushed off to 2025. Alvin Kamara didn't get suspended till the entire season after he committed one of his penalties, but that ended up making him get suspended for three games. So, the Chiefs have no information. They've heard nothing. Every time they ask Andy Reid about Rashi Rice, they're like, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. And what's Rice doing? Just continuing to ball out. And Marquise Brown is no longer going to be part of the game plan because he's been hurt. So he's missing all of training camp. He's a new piece of the offense anyway. So when you look at the way this offense is now set up, who's going to be eating up all of those underneath targets? It's Rashi Rice. Even if in that same role as he was last year, again, the A dot's not sexy, but oh, he's going to catch six balls every single week. And beyond the highest scoring offense in the NFL that throws the ball more than any other offense, sign me up. Wide receiver, 35 ADP. It's it's like not even about just Rice and the things I could sell about him being in the offense and how he broke out as a rookie. His price is just wrong. And you should draft him. You should draft him a round ahead of ADP in every single one of your drafts. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, Rashi Rice is the easiest click in fantasy football. And it aged well because Marquis Brown ended up getting hurt. So it worked out in my favor. And Rashi Rice didn't get suspended during that time. But I still right now think at your home leagues, we're fine where Rashi Rice's ADP because I guarantee it's way too low. Last year, he ended the year with seven straight games of five or more receptions. And in that period of time, he finished as a wide receiver one, three times. And only one of those did he not at least become a wide receiver three. So some consistency in there. And you've got Brown out of there. Scott, what do you think about Rashi Rice and this low ECR slash ADP? Yeah, we're in major agreement here, Andrew and I. The Chiefs, this was one of the worst Andy Reid offenses in a year that somehow they won the Super Bowl. But who got in the circle of trust in the second half of the year? It was Rasheed Rice and Isaiah Pacheco, who's another guy who I keep drafting. I got Rice in the fourth round at the Fantasy Football Expo last weekend. No, he's not sexy. He's had like a poor man's Amon Ross St. Brown, right? You don't think of St. Brown threatening the defenses with intermediate and deep routes. He's just, he lives to have that, you know, nine for 102 stat line. And Rice is going to be a lot of that. And the, maybe the most important thing that, that Andrew mentions, they can kick the can down the road with the suspension. I don't, I'm not sure that Rice will get suspended at all. And even if he does, it almost certainly sounds like a 2025 thing. So you're getting a discount for that. He's been mispriced all summer. And we again, at, at the time, some of that ADP is baked in because we didn't know. I think things are a lot more clear now that there's nothing to worry about. There's been an injury with Brown. I know Brown is sexy because he runs deep routes and Worthy, of course, is an exciting prospect who comes in. But the Chiefs may take their time with Worthy. They took their time with Rice last year when he was screaming for a bigger role. 
I'm going to emphatically say it with, with Andrew Erickson. I want you to target Rasheed Rice because the market has not fixed his price. All right, you guys both have one left, and I am going to just let each of you hit yours, and then we'll see if we can get just a couple questions in. So let's go over to you, Mr. Scott Pianowski. Your final one here is Jackson Smith and Jigba, who has got quite a lower uh, ADP and ECR, ECR 38, ADP 45, but that wide receiver one upside is there. You know, and interestingly enough, he didn't have a ton of like big target games. He was only targeted seven or more times, four times last year, but Lockett had that. 10 times. So I think the key here, no pun intended on the locket, is that Jackson Smith and Jigba and Tyler Lockett have to kind of switch those roles. And I think you can, you know, just unleash for Jackson Smith and Jigba. But talk to us about JSN. Yeah, at some point that's going to happen to lock it into an age 32 season. It's the second season for JSN. I can't believe every scout was wrong on this guy, right? I think a year ago, Brian Hartline, I want to say, the wide receiver coach at OSU, thought JSN might have been the best of that group of the Chris Olave and, and Garrett Wilson and Marvin Harrison Jr. class. And that sounds silly right now, but the point is that JSN can play. Battled injuries his first year. We've been spoiled by rookie receivers being plug and play in recent seasons. For years, that wasn't the case. Ryan Grubb comes in, did wonderful things with the Washington offense. He stays in the general area. Seattle's offensive line collapsed in the first week of last season. I'm willing to give almost this entire offense a mulligan. JSN's a good football player. He had a bad run out last year. The line got broken right away. He They didn't throw him in the deep end of the pool. There's so much room for growth here. I, I can't believe that everybody who loved this guy a year ago is all of a sudden wrong. He's kind of like the Kyle Pitts of, of wide receivers. Oh, that's a good, that's a good comp. I like that. All right, uh, Andrew, you're going to finish us out here with your final wide receiver with that wide receiver upside. And I wouldn't say you call, talk smack about him a little bit earlier, but you used him as an example of why someone else can be great how is Tank Dell going to be a number one wide receiver when all those other great wide receivers are out there? ECR 31, ADP of 29. We see, well, it comes down to one simple principle because I don't know who's going to score the most touchdowns. I don't know who's going to get the most targets. Don't know who's going to play in 12 personnel, yada, yada, yada. I do know this. Who loves Tank Dell? CJ Stroud. Who's the quarterback of the Houston Texans? CJ Stroud. That's where I'm pushing my chips in because when we saw Tank Dell immediately hit the field last year as a rookie, after a uber productive career at the college level, despite being undersized, all he did was ball out from the get-go with CJ Stroud as his quarterback. Again, the last four games he played healthy alongside Nico Collins. Tank Dell outgained Nico Collins. In the eight games they played together, their production was identical. I get Nico Collins has that alpha build. He got paid. And yeah, I understand why he's the first guy going off the board. But it's still a value game here. And what if we come after week one? Tank Dell leads the team in targets. Well, what happens then? Oh, well, Tank Dell's going to be valued higher than Nico Collins, even though they are playing the Colts. And Nico Collins is probably going to get at least 150 yards. I got the clown costume ready to go for week two <laughs> on the trade show. Cannot wait for it. But for right now, I have to draft the Texas receiver. I can't leave a draft where, man, this offense could be so good for the passing game. And if I'm going to fade Nico, that means I have to be aggressive, at least targeting guys like Stephon Diggs and then Tank Dell because he's the cheapest. So for me, again, it's hard to parse through the targets and the touchdowns. But for me, it's like Tank Dell broke out as a rookie. His quarterback absolutely loves him. And if they hadn't added these other weapons, we'd have less question marks about him in this offense. So for me, Tank Dell, that's why I like him at his value as a wide receiver three that I think has wide receiver one upside attached to CJ Stroud. Stroud doesn't just love him. He actually pitched for them to draft Dell. I mean, think about that. I mean, CJ Stroud, I, I will listen to just talk all day long about football. He is just like the most fun. He's just, just pitching for everybody. By the way, we only need the nose, Erickson. We don't need like the whole thing. Like if you want to do makeup and stuff. I mean, it, let's, it depends on how many yards Nico Collins gets against the Colts secondary. That's... That, the... <laughs> I think, I'm on, I think I'm on three shows with you this year, so I'll hold you to it, buddy. Don't worry about it. Uh, just a couple quick questions before we get out of here. Uh, we have got Brandon says, do you trust Deontay Johnson with Bryce Young or Calvin Ridley with Levis? To me, it's Deontay, and it isn't close. Uh, Pianowski, let's go to you when we're talking about Calvin. What do you say there, Deontay with Bryce or Calvin with Will Levis? Yeah, I think your hit rate's going to be higher with Deontay Johnson. The reason why is I'm just willing to follow Dave Canales into a burning building. He was, His fingerprints were all over the Geno Smith renaissance two years ago. And then he turned Baker Mayfield from a punchline into a, a pretty good quarterback last year. I'm curious to see what happens to Tampa Bay without Canales. Obviously, Bryce Young is undersized for the position. He can't see some of those over the mill throws. But I, I just at this point, Dave Canales and 11 random dudes, I think he can make them into a credible offense. And Deontay Johnson is obviously a heck of a route runner. 
I like that. Uh, Erickson, we got a question here. In a Superflex dynasty, what do you think about Pacheco as an RB1? I like it. I mean, we don't know who their RB2 is in this offense. It could be Edwards Lair, Denaric Prince, a fullback that they just signed from rugby. We don't know. They have plenty of options, but Isaiah Pacheco seems like the guy. And if he's playing this high powered offense, again, the only thing question marks are, well, does he see a lot of red zone usage? Like that's really the biggest question mark that could be, you know, his Achilles heel per se. But when it comes to rushing, when it comes to being efficient, he's going to be both of those. Uh, good one. This is a, this is the best question of all. These are those great keeper questions. Would you rather have Bijan at one, two or Michael Pittman at the nine, two, is there more value in Pittman to justify not taking, you know, some, I mean, I think Debro has uh, Bijan at the number one spot. Scott, what do you think about that massive value with Pittman or just go with the best guy? Man, I, I'm willing to throw value into the shredder if we're talking about an elite talent, but you're, you're paying sticker on Bijan. I, I have to go Pittman. I'd be afraid it would blow up in my face. I would try to trade. I would try to draft Robinson in the first round if I could. I don't know what your draft capital is. Here's the thing. Here's the take I want you to take. You're asking the right question. It's okay. Your keepers don't always have to be. Oh, I'm making ten cents here and fifteen cents here and twenty cents here. Sometimes there's something to be said for paying a lot for a quote unquote sure thing. Look at that Atlanta schedule. Falcons are going to win 11 games. I'm not even sure they're that great, but they have an unbelievable that Warren Sharp schedule grade. I mean, the Falcons are on their own island with that they're on the they're on the moon everybody else is on earth so i want you to get Bijan robinson shares here i would take Pittman, but I, it would make me a little bit nervous erickson are you gonna nickel and dime if you will in this scenario no i'm thinking we're going with Bijan because i think mm. that you can find value elsewhere but you're not going to find Bijan. so that's the way i would look at it i have it. no problem with that yeah, you, I, yeah. I hope and by in the previous question asked about pacheco i want you to be overweight on pacheco this year it's harder to be overweight on Bijan because you, you're walking your draft drafting nines you can't get robinson but I hope everybody out there is playing in multiple leagues. You've got to have some Robinson in your portfolio. I look, everybody loves the guy, but he's like, if you're in a salary cap draft, you're you're spending extra money on B. John Robinson. Look at look at this dude over here. Pianowski is the bet. Literally has to and has to make sure you guys know he's one of my favorites. Did baseball with him this year. Scott, I am glad to have done this show with you this year and going to be doing some in-season shows here on Fantasy Pros with Mr. Scott Pianowski. So make sure you follow him at Scott underscore Pianowski. 